Hey everybody, it's the coach and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what ought to be a great matchup between the Oakland Raiders and the Los Angeles Rams. I'll see you again with scores and updates at halftime. But for now, it's my distinct pleasure to hand things over to our broadcast team. It's Brandon God and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Oakland Raiders. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kick off straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here comes the Raiders offense now onto the field. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. And one of the things that I think that Derek Carr has really improved in doing since college, his ability to stay in the pocket, things swirling around him, find the right guy and deliver the ball with accuracy. Derek Carr has great touch when he throws the football. Throwing on first down is Carr. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the ground, this is Jalen Richard. Room to run past midfield. And finally brought down at the 43. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now the first carry for Marshawn Lynch. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. throw on second down oh he's able to out muscle him here as he pulls it in a good pick up there of 20 yards so Amari Cooper out of Northwestern High School in Miami making a nice play there and it's so funny that when I was going through the draft process when he came out of Alabama and was inquiring about him and his skills they say it all began back in Miami. He really became a pro receiver at a young age because of his attention to detail and precision. But don't forget his athletic ability. That's what made that catch there. And he did spend one year with Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback there, so that helped back in high school. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time All this set. afternoon. Offense. That's on the big guard, Gabe Jackson. Still second down. the penalty clinch and he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. and the big boys up front in the trenches what do you think of the o-line charles i love them because this is a group that's so cohesive they know what the man next to them is going to do at all times and they operate as a terrific unit to throw on third and one. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Jordy Nelson, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. And a great example there, just getting the feet in in a tough spot. It seems like every year these guys get better at this. Well, I think the drills get better, that they work on training camp, off-season work, OTAs. But also, a lot of these guys have dance backgrounds, ballet backgrounds, and they take that and carry it over to the football field. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. On for the extra point, Giorgio Tavecchio. Tavecchio good on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with an Oakland touchdown. To Vecchio now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. I love this guy's makeup. He is not afraid to fail. He attacks on just about every snap. Wants to throw the football downfield first. He'll throw it short if he has to. The bottom line, he must put a lot of pressure on the defense with his arm. Go, 
Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Gurley again here on first down. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. They go play action with Gurley. Now golf. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right in midfield at the 50. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. From the 50, it's golf. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. On first down, it's Gurley. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They've got it second and six to start things out. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. Down right around the 25. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Black 20! They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Now Gurley's staying down. Well, let's hope he's all right. We'll check on his status when we get back.
So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So, yes, it's only three, but at least they're able to answer back after giving up the touchdown to start the game. Yeah, I like the observation there because getting some points on the board, very positive for them. Feel a little bit better about things because if you don't score, you potentially have opened the door for them to score again, and then you're down 14. For the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac. But you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. The tackle there by LaMarcus Joyner. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Back to the ground, this time Lynch. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So after the run by Lynch, here's another first and 10. They run again on first down, Lynch. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Lynch, nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Throwing his car on third down. Looking deep downfield. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Townsend to punt it. Back deep, the dangerous Sparrow Cooper. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Getting 
set to go again here. Robert Woods marches back onto the field. And you look at the numbers, not only has he not caught a pass, they haven't targeted him yet. And we're coming up toward halftime. And you remember our meeting with the coach beforehand? What did he tell us about him? I write his number on my play sheet and I circle it in bold, bold type because I want to make sure he gets the ball and often. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. Marcus Gilchrist there to bring him down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So a decent gain, but still also not down. on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Now go off on first down. Right side complete. That's Woods. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Goff on first down. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. 
So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So the challenge comes in inside of two minutes, and it gets overturned. And it changes the whole format of what's about to happen because both sides had thought a certain call had been made. Now they have to flip back and start over. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. First and 10 at the 19. From the gun, here's Goff. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. It's been my observation there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. The linebacker, Derek Johnson, in on the stop. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Out of the gun, golf. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. The linebacker, Derek Johnson, there in coverage. Right, let's go ahead and try and get into the body and the mind of the linebackers. Yeah, I know they're bigger and stronger than I ever was, but in this situation, they understood what was going on as much as the offensive guys. Because the offense guys always taught, find the first down sticks and make the play. Well, on defense, what do you want to do? Guard the first down line. Make sure they don't get there and tackle them in front. They were able to drop in their zone coverage, figure out where the first down line was, and end up making the play, swatting it away so they couldn't get the completion. And Zerline's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. for the made field goal. Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Marshawn Lynch and the Raider offense heading back out there. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game through the air first. Maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Car now on first down. And Roberts with it over the middle. Now whistles come in. We're gonna get a timeout here by the offense. 
as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On second down, here's Carr. Roberts has it. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hey, hey, hey. Get three. Got three. Get down. Get down. On first down, Carr. Wide open, Amari Cooper. Muscles by at the 25. They give him a gain of 37. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first and ten, here's Carr. His throw caught at about the five. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now, Carr again. And this is caught by Cooper for a Raider touchdown. Amari Cooper in the final seconds of the first half. And the Raiders add six to their lead. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. To Vecchio to add the PAT. Extra point up and good by Tavecchio. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it winds up in six points for the Raiders.
To Vecchio now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty, as they come up on first and ten. Four down, four down. Shot by 20. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Raiders out in front as we send you cross-country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And Gurley here fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. But it looked like a Rams player was able to get his hands on it. Yes, so they will hold on to the football indeed. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And now running right through it. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Right back to him on first down. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Four down, four down. Not 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 47. They'll run here with John Kelly. And some room to run now. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 12 more yards there and another first down. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around, they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it, and they've run it well here to start the second half. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. And this one is incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. That'll bring up second down. Well, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get down to about the 26 yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there as he'll be left with third and one. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Right. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. A play fake to Gurley, now gone. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Take Carradine with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. You and I both know we're into a whole new realm of football because we're not just looking at tendencies anymore. We're looking at analytics, and I've got to think the analytics on third and one say run the football. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And Zerline's kick is good. And that'll get the lead down to five. So it's a third field goal for him now. He's accounted for all nine points. I look down to the sideline, though. You can just tell they weren't too happy for three. They wanted six. No, they have to have six. Look, he's keeping them afloat. But they really need to do exactly what you talked about. They need to get into the end zone and score some touchdowns. Otherwise, he's going to have to kick a lot more field goals than just the three he's already put through the post. For the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now, 
to throw his car. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First down, the run with Lynch. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. to throw after the play fake to Lynch. And that is incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. Third down here. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half. Incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, I should not stop them at all from going back to him. To find him. Find him. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Shotgun now for Carr. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Samson Abukum in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. Seems to me that our friend Old Momentum, <laughs> I think he's definitely changed teams in this game. It's only going to grow after that sack. And now, heck, they can get the ball back here and possibly even get the lead. Here now, Johnny Townsend, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 15. 21 yards, well done on the return. And the Rams are going offense here for the first and 10. Goff will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Throw on second down is gone. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down, L.A., golf finding Higby. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. First down, it's gone. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. 
Picked off by Derek Johnson. 20, 10, and the Raiders are in for six. Touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. The lefty Tavecchio now to add the extra point. Tavecchio good on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. but they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. And search a redemption from the pick six. Gone. And the Raiders have got him. Bruce Irvin in there to get him for a loss of five. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. A shotgun snap for goal. It's caught left side by Cooks. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The Rams on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. Goff now looks to throw. Throw left side, complete to Cup. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He got out of bounds, that's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Bruce Irvin in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, 
and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And now here come the Raiders. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. They go play action here on first down. He's going to go up top for the hit. And this is caught by Cooper for a Raider touchdown. Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Raiders add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Carr gives to Marshawn. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. The Raiders on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And he finds Cook. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run with Lynch. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They've got a second and goal now as they look to add a few more points here onto their total. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Oh, now. You ready? 
From the gun, it's Carr. Now he's got it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Ram fans in this old stadium on their feet. Third and goal. They'll run for it with Lynch. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Marshawn Lynch, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Raiders add six to their lead. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. Extra point up and good by Tavecchio. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive spanned five plays, and it's all capped off by a Marshawn Lynch touchdown run. To Vecchio now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. On first down, gone. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game. And to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on. And they just play better and better. Line of scrimmage. Again, the 25, second and 10. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he loses the football a second time. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. The Rams on third down, not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and seven. Gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they work this well up field across the 45. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. From the gun, here's Gone. 
And that's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And he's going to be met behind the line of scrimmage and taken down. And a penalty flag is going to come out on top of it. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, holding. Still second down. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Now it's gone. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Third and long. It's gone. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to let it fly. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Gary and Conlon. And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. They come into enemy territory, and I don't care what the matchup is in the National Football League, you're up like this late in the game on the road. This feels pretty good. Oh, it feels fantastic. Anytime you get a road victory in the NFL, that's a big-time accomplishment, and to do it this convincingly, that just tears up the script that every home team has, which is nobody comes into our house and pushes us around. They took care of business today. Yeah, they pushed around, and now the final stages of this one. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. The Raiders likely going to get out of this with a victory as they take a knee. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.